What's up guys and welcome back to our NWA TNA series in TW 2016. We are back now on show number 47. We are really close to our first ever Slammiversary event. Only two weeks to go. I'm quite excited about it. I'm going to keep pre-booking these shows up to the pay-per-view itself. Just to make it a bit easier for me because these are quite story intense. And like I've got like a lot of the X Division qualifiers, I want to make sure the right people are in them and that. I did say I was gonna show the card in the last episode, I didn't I don't think I will, actually up to the pay per view. You can kinda of see where certain things are going. But I kinda of like keeping it vague. So so far announced, we have AJ Styles versus Rob Van Dam. We have a X Division what do you call it? An X Division Ultimate X match. Which currently only has Hayabusa as the only entrant. We'll get two more entrants tonight. We've got tag titles being defended in a four corners match. I forgot if it's a ladder match or not, and I don't want to check. But it might be a ladder match. I might make it a ladder match. I might not. Who knows? And we have all kinds of other shenanigans are going on. So let's just jump right into the show. In our pre show, a terrible pre show match. Oh, that's a shame. Bob Sapp only gets a 13. Damn. Uh, Bob Sapp debuted, defeats Colt Cabana in 620 by pinfall with the Sambo Suplex 27E. His in ring skills might not be that great, but he's pretty charismatic and I kind of like him. I'm probably going to just keep Bob Sapp around as a guy I like. But you know, it's early in his career and we might get developmental soon. So I might send him there if we can. That'd be nice. Then our first X Division Ultimate X qualifying match. And about to have decent wrestling, but then how much heat Brian Danielson defeats Pete Williams in 1202 by submission, cementing his place in the six man Ultimate X match at Slammiversary 1. Pretty decent in ring rating, I'm quite happy with that. Pretty good opening to the show as well. And then following that, we have Daniels is backstage. He marches into Brit Hart's office. I just got like the. Calgary Hitman jersey framed on the wall, stuff like that. And he slams his hands down on the table and he goes, Why aren't I in those X Division qualifying matches? I am the X Division. <laughs> and uh, Bret Hart goes, But you lost the title. And I don't want to take that opportunity away from someone that hasn't had a chance yet. But, Christopher, if you're so confident of your championship abilities, why don't you go out there, get yourself a tag team partner? And you can enter one of the tag team qualifying matches. This is the storyline of this week's episode. Who will Daniels team up with? It's a mystery. Then we have Jeff Jarrett backstage. He cuts a promo on Ken Shamrock. And he's like, Ken Shamrock, I've always disliked you. (laughs) What a way to start a promo. That's actually a really good way to start a promo. He's like, you know, I don't like Ken Shamrock. If you look at our records in NWA TNA, one-on-one. Jeff Jarrett's got a win. Ken Shamrock has a win. In singles competition. Jeff Jarrett thinks it's time to decide once and for all who is the best of the two of them. What better way to do that than at Slammiversary. So he's throwing down the gauntlet. Jarrett's challenging Shamrock. Will he say yes? We'll find out. And about they had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. Casanova defeat the Diamonds in the Rough in 1227. When Frankie Kazarian defeats Johnny Swinger by pinfall with a wave of the future. Kazarian was the best wrestler, that's not too surprising. 56 C minus, pretty happy with that, for especially for a mid-card match. So Casanova, one of the three teams now that have qualified for that tag team possibly ladder match. I'm pretty sure I made it a ladder match, but well, I was going to. And then we get this is our funny backstage segment in this episode, where Daniels is walking down the corridor. He's like, I need to get myself a tag partner. And he sees like Disco Inferno and Disco Inferno's Disco Dancing. Daniels is like, nah. Then he sees Finley just being a mad old lad like he is. And he goes, nah. And he sees BG James and he thinks about it, you know. And he goes like, BG, would you like to be my tag? And he gets about to tag. And then Steve Carino flies in from off screen and just starts beating the crap out of BG James again. But when will we find out why? Probably in next week's episode when I book it. But he beats up BG James and they go away. So Daniels is like, oh, that's awkward. 
And then he does one of those things where like the camera turns and we he stops and then the pan pans across and we see Kaz Hayashi, former number one contender to the NWA world title. He's tagged with Daniels in the past. And he goes, Hey man, would you and then it like Kaz Hayashi just walks away in disgust. You're like, No. Then big sexy Kevin Nash, he sees him, and Daniels is like, Hey man. Do you want to be my tag partner? And Nash goes, how much? And then Daniels just walks away dejected because he doesn't have any money anymore. Poor Daniels. And then until finally, he sees Jeremy Borash at the interview stage that we barely use him. And he goes, Jeremy, would you? And then Jeremy Borash just looks at him like with a sad look in his eyes and we fade to black. <laughs> oh man, I think we've got a 54C minus. I'm quite happy with that. I didn't cheat. Everyone's rated on something in this segment, so I'm quite happy with that. Not bad. Good for you, Daniels. So, after this match, we've got the tag team qualifier. Will Daniels have a partner? We don't know. So, I'll explain what happens. We'll go through this match first of all. In a bit, they had decent wrestling, but little heat. Great Sasuke defeats Sonny Siaki in 8.46 by pinfall with a Thunderfire Powerbomb. In a... In... 8.46, I said that. I got a 56C minus. I'm pretty happy with that match. Great Sasuke did great in the ring, so did Sony Siaki. I might move him away. I don't know if I... I kind of want to keep the Elvises for a while, but, you know... They're not so great. So, the tag team match starts. Out comes team number one, the Wiggly Worms. They have an elaborate dance entrance. They probably have a terrible theme song that's a, like really annoying so they come out they're doing their dance they're doing the wiggle he does the wig oh wait norman smiley does the wiggle right and scotty too, like with his, wor- with his legs really f- far apart scotty too hotty does the worm through his legs while he's doing the wiggle there's a spot oh man that would be so amazing <laughs> so yeah they're doing their entrance it goes on for like five minutes and then we hear uh daniel's theme uh, this is when he started like the weird angelic choir thing, I think. So then out comes Daniels. Everyone's like, oh, it's Christopher Daniels. But who's his partner going to be? And then, oh, it's Kaz Hayashi, boys. Boom. No, it's not. It's an angle with Scott Hall. Damn it. But it's Kaz Hayashi. I hope you're all excited for that after Scott Hall tells us why he hates Monty Brown. So Scott Hall's backstage. <laughs> Damn it. I thought this, I forgot I put the segment in. So Scott Hall's backstage. He's like, you know who I don't like? Monty Brown. Everyone comes up to me and says, this kid is the future of TNA. He's the future of wrestling. You're looking at the future of wrestling. Me, Scott Hall. And he's like, I'm going to beat this punk kid's ass so bad because I'm Scott Hall. And he's just like a big old jerk about Monty Brown. And then all oh, the wiggly worms, oh, he was, yeah, they do the dance, worm through the legs. Here comes Daniels, oh, angel theme. Oh, here comes Kaz Hayashi, what? Surprise team. And about that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Daniels and Kaz defeat the wiggly worms. I need to come up with a proper team name for them. So if you have any, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Serious suggestions. Don't be like, hey, call them Lifeblood or something like that. That's my least favourite stable name I've ever seen in wrestling. It's like what someone would call a stable in like a E-Fed. Except they probably would have a better name than that, to be honest. It's really, you know, early 90s. Anyway, let's get away from Lifeblood and focus on Daniels and Kaz picking up the win over the Wiggly Worms in 1555. The last rights on Norman Smiley. 68C+. Look at these in-ring ratings for Daniels and Kaz. So there you go, the fourth team. Might do little, uh, might do little match-up graphics for Slammiversary, actually. And before the the end of each episode? No, that's a bit... Not at the end of each episode. Maybe on the last, on the Go Home show, we'll have, like, a little preview of Slammiversary. That'll be fun. So following that match, RVD cuts a promo, and he's like, Yo, I really respect AJ Styles. You know, he's pretty great. But he's not as good as RVD. You know, just starting to... You know, they respect each other, but is is do they really respect each other? Is there a growing animosity underneath? 
had a decent match. Following that, Ultimo Dragon, the X Division Champion, successfully defeats Devon Storm in 1318 by pinfall. Getting a 62C. It's not that great. They don't have good chemistry. That didn't help. Damn, that's annoying. It was our main event. Following that, Samoa Joe, he comes out from the crowd, he brutalizes Dragon, makes him bleed, he really, really viciously attacks him again. You're like, damn you, Samoa Joe, he's a, he's a no good villain, that Samoa Joe. And then in our main event segment, holy crap, in a 99A star rated segment, Bret Hart calls out Flair. He calls out Hollywood Hogan. He's like, you two have hated each other for years. Which they have. He goes, I've had enough of it. You hated each other in WWF? You hated each other in WCW? You're not going to hate each other in, w- in NWA TNA. We're going to settle this once and for all. A slam anniversary. Hulk Hogan, or sorry, Hollywood Hogan. Ric Flair. One on one. The winner will face the NWA World Champion at NWA TNA 50. What? Crazy. Pretty excited about that match. Let's end the show so our popularity is up in 10 regions. 74 B-, minus, even with a slightly weaker main event. God, our men... We can do no wrong at this point. We are... Things are... Everything's coming up TNA. I'm hoping we reach that pot of that uh, cult popularity soon. Still regional. 46, 53. Oh, it's so close. Let's look at our mail. We have a lot of mail. I missed what Hulk Hogan said about Bob Sapp. I assume he's telling me he's the greatest of all time, which would be true. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I did. If you're excited about NWA TNA Slam Anniversary 1, as I am, which is probably not possible, uh, you can leave a comment. You can leave a comment suggesting your uh, Daniels and Kaz Hayashi team names. That would be nice. Anyone that says, like, the addiction, bad influence, or SCU, I'm going to be really disappointed in you. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can check out the all the Grey Dog Software games from my affiliate link. Support the channel. Yay! I, If you want to see other stuff I do, you can subscribe. That's cool. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!